What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today, I'm going to be going over my new Picaram list. Uh, for a while, I thought Picaram was going to be completely dead because of Mega Low Punny and Jigglypuff Tag Team GX. If you're not familiar with the card, the card is amazing and completely decimates Picaram as we knew it, right? Jumping Balloon does 60 damage plus 60 more damage for each of your opponent's Pokemon GX and EX in play. Picaram very regularly had at least three Pokemon GX in play. You could have a Picaram, a Raichu, an Alolan Raichu, and a Dedenne on your bench, sometimes multiple Dedenne on the bench, meaning that Jumping Balloon for just three colorless energy could easily ramp up and deal enough damage to knock out your Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX. Also, with Malamar getting a lot better, things for Picaram were looking tough. Also, Chaotic Swell, really bad for Picaram. Chaotic Swell is bad for a number of reasons, not only because it protects decks like Gardevoir and Sylveon and their Lightning Charms, not only because it... Uh, it does that. It also prevents you from putting your Thunder Mountain Prism Star into play, which prevents a lot of turn to full blitz plays. So a lot of things going against Picaram heading into this new Cosmic Eclipse format, but I think that the deck is strong enough to survive the new format. So I've been toying with the deck quite a bit with new meta changes. We've got new threats on the horizon. We've got updated Malamar decks. We've got Arceus, Dalga, and Palkia decks all over the place. New Greens decks that are popping out uh, of the metagame as well, featuring Charizard and Breaks in Tag Team GX. So with all of these new threats, I've tried to take them into consideration when crafting this new list, and I've actually had a decent amount of success with this new Picaram list in the new meta. I think Pikachu and Zekrom has a lot of things going for it. So I'm gonna show off the list, talk about some of the changes, most notably no Dedenne GX that you might see here, and uh, and talk about maybe the future of Picaram, then play a couple of games and see how they go. So let's get right down to it. The deck still has the same back, backbone as we knew it previously. You've got two Picaroms and one Raichu and Alolan Raichu. I do like the non-GX attackers with Hoopa and Zapdos as well. They really help you to deal with Caldeo GX, which is everywhere comboed with Chaotic Swell now. So Hoopa and Zapdos, great for helping against Caldeo GX. Also great efficient attackers just to sit behind while you build up your tag team Pokemon. They're also great targets for Pokemon communication to help you get your Tapu Koko Prism Star, and they're really good against Malamar. So I do like the Zapdos and the Hoopa in this deck. And you'll notice no Zeraora GX. There's no Zeraora and no Dedenne GXs, which is absolutely wild for a Picaram list. Now, without Zeraora GX, it's like, okay, I can understand that. You're playing Power Plants. It kind of makes sense. Maybe we're not relying on that free retreat all the time. But no two prizers at all, no Dedenne GX. And I kind of flirted with the idea of no Dedenne GX. I actually tried out a Greens Picaram list. And if it helps you to kind of conceptualize where I'm coming from, think of it like a Greens Picaram list. I actually tried out Greens Picaram. It was bad. It was like not what I wanted. It was a little bit too slow. But then the more I thought about Greens Picaram, I was like, you know what? Uh, why play Greens Exploration when we just have Volkner? And Volkner is a really good card for the Picaram deck because it gets you an item out of the deck and also a Lightning Energy. And you're going to want a Lightning Energy every single turn to make manually attached to your tag team Pokemon or Zapdos or what have you. So uh, with Volkner instead of Greens, I was like, okay, well then we can start playing Jirachi, right? Because you really want to Stellar Wish to sit behind while you set up your Pika Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX. So without the Greens engine, you can afford a lot of stability with the Jirachi engine, even if you're not playing Dedenne GX. Now, there is no Dedenne GX in the list because it really stifles you in a lot of ways. It gives ADP an option to just knock out one of your benched Pokemon for three prizes to finish off the game, which is really bad. It also gives a lot of decks the ability to do that when you're playing against Breaks in and Charizard decks. They can just gust up one of your Dedenne's on the bench and finish it off. When you're playing against Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX decks, they're almost always finishing the game with a Venom Shot on your bench or gusting up a bench Dedenne and just annihilating it. And also in the Picaram Mirror, the Dedenne is a huge liability. And then against, of course, Megalopunny and Jigglypuff, the Dedenne is a huge liability. And then against Malamar, the Dedenne is a huge liability. So it's starting to feel like 
Picaram might be better off without Dedenne. So I set out to build a list, a Dedenne list, Picaram list, and it's been going well for me so far. We've got four Jirachi in the list because you want to start it every game. And since you only have, uh, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven non Jirachi basics, your odds of starting the Jirachi are pretty high in this particular list. And with four of them, uh, the idea is you don't just want one, you wanna get two into play pretty quickly. And with only two Pokemon communication and no way to search out your basic Pokemon, it's not exactly easy to get two Jirachi into play. So you want to play as many as you possibly can. Got the one resetting whole Marshadow in here. I was playing Faba in earlier drafts of this list. The idea is that now we need a way to bump Chaotic Swell in case you want to get your Thunder Mountain Prism Star into play or in case you need to get your Power Plant into play to knock out a Caldeo. So you could play the Faba instead of Marshadow, but the Marshadow is slightly more searchable in this deck. There's no way to search out one of supporters. So the Faba was not seeing any play. I just kept discarding it. Uh, but you can get Faba back with Cynthia and Caitlyn. So that is like a cool little niche of playing Faba. But I think that the resetting whole Marshadow probably a little bit more versatile for bumping Chaotic Swell on turns that you want to put Power Plant into play and just knock out a Caldeo. You need to have that kind of versatility in your deck or you could just get walled off by a caldeo with a chaotic swell so we do have the marsh shadow to do it the rest of the deck is pretty standard peak rom fair but there are a few key differences that i want to talk about we've got the tag call engine in this deck and if there's one thing that peak rom gains a lot uh, from the new set, it's the Tag Call Engine. And I think the Tag Call Engine's phenomenal. You'll see there's no electromagnetic radars in the deck. It's because we only have three uh, Tag Team Pokemon, right? And three Lightning Pokemon GX, really. There's no targets for your electromagnetic radars. So Tag Call is just strictly better. We've got four Tag Calls, three Cynthia and Caitlyn's, and two Mallow and Lana. Mallow and Lana is really cool in the deck because it's just a switch card. And with the Jirachi Engine, switches are very very good and it's a switch card you can get back with Cynthia and Caitlyn so against Pidgeotto decks you now have three four five switch outs in your deck and then Cynthia and Caitlyn can get back any number of Mallow and Lana you can get back both your Mallow and Lana you can get it back essentially three times if you time your Cynthia and Caitlyn correctly which just gives you a ton of out to switching throughout the course of the game which is very good especially since we're not playing that Zero Aura GX anymore but I found that a lot of times the Zero Aura GX uh, though using that uh, GX attack to bring back your energy a lot of times if you've gotten to that point in the game against Pidgeotto and you haven't won uh, it can be pretty tough so I've found that this list can certainly beat Pidgeotto you just build up a couple of Picaroms and hit your switch cards when you want to try to run them off the the field especially with the tag bolt gx since many pidgeotto lists that i've been seeing are not running the mew from unbroken bonds anymore since they don't really consider picarom to be a threat so you could still win the game with a couple of picaroms and just a high amount of switch cards so the tag call engine very good it searches out your tag team pokemon you can easily tag call and then pokemon communication for your tapu coco prism star or you could tag call for a picarom and a cynthia and caitlin to draw some cards on the first turn of the game and you'll find yourself doing that quite a bit the acro bikes were a late addition to this list i didn't start off with the four acro bikes but i found like i found that i was not drawing quite enough cards in the deck i had an extra skateboard I had two copies of Faba, and there was one other card, a second tag switch. Those were the four cuts that I made for the four acro bikes. And I really love the four acro bikes since I put them in here. I felt like I, I was just not drawing quite enough cards. Also, it was very difficult to get lightning energy into the discard pile. We had, uh, I think, four copies of Cynthia were in my original list, and that was the only way to get lightning energy into the discard pile was to play Cynthia and Caitlyn and discard it that way. That was not really sufficient. So the acro bikes have just offered another way to get lightning energy in the discard pile for Tapu Koko, Prism Stars, Dance of the Ancients, allowing to hit some turn to uh, full blitzes sometimes with the Tapu Koko, Prism Star, but more often than not, you're going to be hitting the turn two full blitz with Thunder Mountain, Prism Star, and using your Stadium Nav to get there. You could play a copy of Guzma and Hala if you wanted to, to guarantee yourself the Thunder Mountain, Prism Star off of the tag call. My issue with that is that there's not exactly a a ton of use for the secondary effect on Guzma and Hala. 
getting a tool card and a special energy card, I guess you could get your one of a skateboard with it, which is definitely useful to slap onto a Jirachi, but then a special energy, we don't play any special energy. I mean, I suppose you could run a one of, you know, unit energy or blend or whatever they're called now. Yes, yeah, something like this, right? To go get, you know, and slap onto a Picaram. You could do that if you really wanted to run the Guzma and Hala and we're set on it. Tag Call does search that out and it is a guaranteed search for your Thunder Mountain Prism Star, which is useful. Mallow and Lana is an all-star in this deck. Absolutely amazing. You could glance off hits on your Picaram. This is huge in the Malamar matchup as well. Not only do we have Hoopa and Zapdos, we've given up on the Lysander Labs. That is no longer a thing uh, that we do with this list. So if you're worried about Guardian Sylveon, you're going to have to go back to the Faba. Like I said, you could play Faba, you get rid of the Mars Shadow, play Faba instead, and then you can Cynthia and Caitlyn theoretically for your Faba back, and you can get rid of the Lightning Charms that way. But the reason why I cut the, uh, the Fabas is because Guardian Sylveon decks are not even playing Lightning Charms anymore because they're not scared of Picaram, so it really is meta dependent. Either way, Mallow and Lana is insane in this deck. It helps against Malamar. It helps against just about everything. Being able to glance off hits on your Picaram and then switch back into Jirachi is very good. It's also insane for Raichu and Alolan Raichu Tag Team GX, allowing you to Tandem Shock over and over again. And you can really just Tandem Shock, take a hit if they happen to find the switch out, right? Tandem Shock, you know, Mallow and Lana, Tandem Shock again. And it allows you to pull off these games where you really just win the entire game with Raichu and Alolan Raichu. You just combo some Mallow and Lanas back to back with Reset Stamp and Paralysis, and you can wipe the whole game out with a single Raichu and Alolan Raichu. Uh, the Mallow and Lana, I'm definitely sold on this card. It is very good in the Picaram deck, and I'm very high on it right now. And then with Cynthia and Caitlyn, uh, just being able to be searchable with your tag calls, it's excellent for getting Mallow and Lana and Volkner back from the discard pile. You find yourself doing it all the time. A lot of times you will use Cynthia and Caitlyn on turn one just to dig into your deck a little bit further. You don't get those crazy explosive turn ones that you used to get with Picaram. You're pretty much never getting a turn one full blitz. We just have to concede that. And I think that's okay because this format is a little bit slower. It's slowed down quite a bit with cards like Megalopunny and Jigglypuff being able to put a check on the turbo decks, you know, putting a check on the decks that lay down three to Dene GX throughout the course of the game. Uh, I think Mallow and Lana also makes the, the format a lot slower too because it can punish uh, your opponent when they don't get the one hit KO. So then you're just glancing off these hits. So it's slowly becoming better to play a tankier deck. I think the format is kind of evolving in this way instead of it just being all about the turbo decks, you know, all about the turbo Mewtwo, all about the turbo Picaram. Now it's better to play grindy decks that can glance off hits, that can uh, play longer games uh, that become more about survivability. And this is something that I've noticed throughout uh, my games on the ladder that I've been playing and throughout uh, just getting a lot of games in with standard format. So I really like the Mallow and Lana. The Cynthia and Caitlyn's were a little bit underwhelming at first. I loved being able to get Mallow and Lana and Volker back from the discard pile, but I just wasn't seeing enough cards with them. And that's where the Acro Bikes really started to come in handy because now with Stellar Wish, you know, sometimes multiple times with your three switches and your skateboard, uh, you can Stellar Wish multiple times, you can Acro Bike multiple times, and you can Cynthia and Caitlyn. And when you consider the fact that Tag Call is just like sucking the good cards out of your deck, you're just sucking the supporters out, you're sucking the Pokemon out of your deck with Tag Call. If you play two Tag Call in the first turn of your game, you get four cards out of the deck into your hand, and then you start Acro Biking and you're Stellar Wishing, and you're Stellar Wishing and Acro Biking just into the good stuff because you've taken, you know, the Pika Roms, you've taken the, uh, the supporters out of your deck, and you're starting to see a lot more live cards on your Stellar Wish and on your Acro Bikes. So I found that the four Acro Bikes really help speed the deck along, and I don't feel like I'm playing with a uh, just, you know, a bad Picaram list anymore. It feels like the list is cohesive, it works, it has a strategy, and, uh, and we're able to lean on that to win games quite a bit. Uh, I only have one copy of Tag Switch, no more energy switches in the deck with far fewer Pokemon you, and the deck just being slower in general. Tag Switch, you can play it as a one or a two of in the deck and I haven't found myself needing much more than that since Zapdos and Hoopa attack for one energy 
and then Pika Ram and you know Raichu and Alolan Raichu are going to get energy attached to them and then energy accelerated them with Tapu Koko. There's really no need for the energy switches in this list anymore. Stadium Nav, still my favorite, least favorite card in the deck. When it's awesome, it's awesome. When it doesn't work, it's horrible, and I want to throw it away and play Guzma and Hala instead. Custom Catchers are definitely still optimal in the deck. Not only do they help you draw cards at the end of the game or if you're playing against Pidgeotto, there's a lot of you know cards that a Pidgeotto player can't give you, right? They can't give you Tag Call. They can't give you Acro Bike. They can't give you Custom Catcher. They can't give you Mallow and Lana. They can't give you Cynthia and Caitlyn because you'll get a Mallow and Lana back. There's like a lot of very live cards in this deck. Um, you know, at the end of the game, if you're getting your hand limited, they can't give you Switch because you'll switch into a Jirachi. So there's a lot of really good cards in the deck that uh, that are just good to have in the deck. Custom Catcher contributes to that. Not only that, Picarom really loves being able to target down non-GX Pokemon on the opponent's side of the field and tag bolt them, right? So that's our primary strategy against the non-GX decks. You want to target down key things on the bench that maybe they weren't planning on having brought up since most decks are playing Great Catcher now, and then being able to glance off hits with the Mallow and Lana. Still playing uh, two copies of Power Plant right now. I've actually switched this up. I've gone back and forth. Power Plant is really good for turning off Caldeo, also a generally good card. The two copies of Power Plant, it's not exactly going to win you any games against uh, decks like Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX, though, and the power plants are really just there to help against Caldeo GX with your resetting whole Marshadow. But I think that you could just beat an RCS Dialga Palkia deck even without power plants. Just, you know, you get a big Zapdos, Thunder's Assault. If you triple Electro Power, knock out a Caldeo that way. You can also Hoopa and then Zapdos to knock out a Caldeo. And usually against an Arceus Dalgapalkia deck, you might not even have to knock out the Caldeo. You'll knock out one Arceus Dalgapalkia. You might knock out a Dedenny on the bench, and then you could just Custom Catcher a Jirachi or something for a game. So I don't find myself having to really chew through the Caldeo that much. And I'm considering taking out the power plants altogether since they haven't really been that useful. Swell does just stop them all the time, and that's really annoying. And I think a better a better stadium might be the Viridian uh, Viridian Forest, just to help you get more lightning energy into your hand to help turn lightning energy into the discard pile for Tapu Koko Prism Star. So that's something I'm looking at as well. I am stoked about the power plant. You know, when you get to pull off the power plant stamp, that's pretty good. Uh, and can be strong against a lot of things, especially decks that are using Sil Valley GX to draw cards. Power Plant is a nice versatile card. I just don't find myself using it for Caldeo GX, which is why it's originally in the deck for me right now anyways. And yeah, we still got four Electro Power. I once in the deck, I want a fourth switch back or a second escape board still. It's kind of on my... Uh, on my wish list. I can justify three switch because I've got the two Mallow and Lana now and those kind of act as switch cards. But I think I do want the second escape board. My original draft of the list did have three switch, two escape boards because the Mallow and Lanas allow you to pivot into Jirachi and when Jirachi has an escape board on it, it's much stronger because then it just makes your Mallow and Lanas much stronger as well. Um, and I tried out like a one of Dedenne in the list with a one of Electromagnetic Radar just so you could Volkner for it, but I didn't find myself loving it, and the Dedenne just kept losing me games by getting gusted up. So I think as is, the list is very strong, and you know, like I said, some flex spots. You could cut the Marshadow, you can mess with the stadiums, you know, however you want, but the backbone of the deck with the Tag Call engine is super dope, and I definitely suggest trying it out. So let's get into some games and see how it plays. While we're queuing up, if you're looking for PTCGO codes, make sure to check out FullGripCodes.com. It's a new website we've set up here at Full Grip Games where we have instant PTCGO code delivery. You just uh, pick out the codes you want on the website. I helped design the website myself with uh, the banner and the photograph on the front page and everything. And then you just uh, check out and the codes get instantly delivered to you. So really stoked about the new code website. Make sure to, to check that out. I've been updating it with more and more codes as we process them. We hand check all of our codes on the website to make sure that they are not redeemed uh, just for you know everyone's convenience so that we never run into any issues like that. Uh, because we do get codes in collection sometimes, and it's hard for us to tell if whether or not those have been uh, redeemed or not. So we do check them uh, before we upload them to the site, and it's a great resource, hopefully, for players to just be able to pick up codes uh, when they uh, when is convenient for you guys. I mean, we used to 
hand email them all out. Uh, but now we just have it instantly set up at fullgripcodes.com. Also, make sure to check out fullgripgames.com for all your TCG singles and uh, things like accessories, deck boxes, sleeves. We've got some pretty dope stuff up on the website. And uh, thank you guys all for supporting the channel and the shop. Looks like we're playing against Pidgeotto. They got a really bad start. I started with my Raichu and Alolan Raichu. That's fine. I am totally fine with them having a Dutter start here. So we're just going to Acro Bike first and see what we get ourselves into. Two Lightning in the discard pile. They actually Marsed one down, which is fine by me. And this is probably just a hand where we Volkner for a Tag Call and get some things going that way. Just Tag Call, get our Picarom out of the deck. Lightning Energy 2. And I do have, what, like two lightning energies in the discard pile at this point. So that's fine. We'll just get these guys. And then, yeah, just chug along from there. I can get myself a Cynthia and Caitlyn from the tag call as well as a Picarom so that I have that option. Um, yeah. So I have that option to draw some cards next turn. I guess if I want to get the turn two full blitz, I might actually just get Mallow and Lana, which is a little bit sketch, but I'm digging it. I'm going for it. We're just going to try and aggress here since we do have the Tapu Koko, Lightning, and then next turn I can Mallow and Lana, you know, Dance of the Ancients, Mallow and Lana, and get an attack off with Picarom. Hoping that they don't crushing hammer my, you know, my lightning there. So I am gonna hold off on using my Tapu Coco Prism Star and just hoping that they don't hit it. And they missed. That's big. And they do have a lecture this turn. So this is a really tough part about playing this matchup is withstanding that early crushing hammer pressure on your peak ROMs while you're trying to get some energy into play. Having the Tapu Coco Prism Star on the bench is essential to getting that quick full blitz. And it looks like they're stabilized at this point. I do have a turn two full blitz and we could just go all in and just full blitz to the active. I don't terribly mind that. Uh, I am a little bit bothered that we don't have multiple targets on the bench for my Tapu Coco Prism Star right now, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And I think that this might be a match where just like running them off the table is probably what we're trying to do here. So I'm thinking that we may just full blitz entirely onto the active. That is a very all in play, but if they don't have the cold crush this next turn, it could just win me the game. So I'm feeling it and we're gonna go for it and see if they can just, uh, they scoop it up. They are getting a little bit of a slow start. I'm getting a turn two full blitz. We'll see how that buffs out for us. And like I said, with no Zero Aura GX in the deck, there's no way to bring the Lightning Energy back. So if they Cold Crush, we probably just lose. But I think that this is the time where they are least likely to Cold Crush. And then next turn, I can Cynthia and Caitlyn for, you know, a Volkner back from that deck and then maybe Tag Switch off of the Picarom so that I don't have all of my eggs in one basket. They also did not have an ideal promote here either. No Jirachi to promote, no Oranguru. So that's why I was feeling pretty good about just trying to run them off the table with the full blitz. Um, they, you know, are definitely at a hand disadvantage right now. So we'll see how this goes from them. They got one airmail. Pidgeotto is a deck that has definitely risen to the top of the metagame. I mean, it is top aided. Plenty of regionals so far before Cosmic Eclipse, and then it gets even stronger with Cosmic Eclipse format. You got Bryson and Belba, Bryson, Belba and Bryson Man. Yes, Belba, Belba <laughs> and Bryson Man, uh, which is really good. Allows you to mill out your opponents, which is cool, and just gives you an out to speed up the game as a control deck. And... Yeah, I mean, that that really is the big deal. You also have Misty and Lorelei, which could allow you to use Cold Crush GX multiple times throughout the course of the game. If you use Misty and Lorelei, you can reuse your water Pokemon's GX attacks, even if you've GX'd. So that is certainly frightening uh, with, the, uh, you know, with the Articuno GX and something to look out for as well. And 
Pidgeotto just seems stronger than ever in the new Cosmic Eclipse format. It even uh, got to the finals of the expanded uh, regional championships in Portland this past weekend with Michael Pramowat finishing second place with the Pidgeotto control deck in expanded. Not something we usually see. Uh, it does look like my opponent is able to get the resource management this turn, and I do get to tag bolts, hoping that they are not able to get the cold crush this next turn. I have a turn... You know, if I can make it one more turn without them cold crushing, I'm going to be taken out of Pidgeotto. They don't have a Mew from Unbroken Bonds on the bench. Like I said, less and less decks have been playing Mew from Unbroken Bonds because they're not afraid of Picaram anymore. So let's tag call. We want Cynthia and Caitlyn, and I think we want probably two Cynthia and Caitlyn's. We're going to draw some cards. Uh, one, I'll get Volkner back to probably get tagged switch and get this energy to safety. So we want that. And then maybe a Mallow and Lana as well, just to give myself a switch card immediately. That seems pretty good. So we'll get those. And then we're going to attach to this Raichu, Alola Raichu, and just Cynthia and Caitlyn discarding the power plants and getting ourselves the Volkner back because I want to get that energy off of the Picaram. So we do have the Jirachi. That'll go on the bench. It's usually never uh, a dead card because your opponent's not going to bring up the Jirachi to try and stall it out. I mean, I've seen him do it. It happens sometimes where that's the only, you know, non-free retreater or non-built-up Pokemon on your side and your opponent has to bring up the Jirachi and hope you ain't got a switch. Uh, but yes, the Jirachi, definitely good to have on the bench. And if we can find a uh, an escape board for it, it makes all our Mallow and Lanas just that much stronger. It makes, makes all of our switches that much stronger as well. And they did throw a water back in, so they could certainly hit uh, an Articuno GX. It looks like they're going for the Tate and Liza. They do have two air mails, two to draw into the combo, but they still have a pretty thick deck with Power Plant in play. Uh, they also cannot use the Articuno GX's ability, so they would have to find a switch out to get the Pidgey out of the active position too, which is really good for me because that just limits you know, their ability to get that, that Cold Crush this turn. And like I said, this is definitely the key turn for us. I found that this peak round list does okay against Pidgeotto. Um, it feels like 50-50. I feel like, you know, Picarom traditionally has been about 50-50 against Pidgeotto. And we see my opponent did not get it. That's fantastic. We get to diversify our energy now and, you know, make things a little bit more safe. So that's nice. We'll go get that tag switch. Gladly move this energy off of the Picarom and over here to the Raichu and Alolan Raichu for safekeeping. I've got two prizes left to take at this point. If they do use Cold Crush GX, they have to worry about that. That's a huge liability. Not only do they have to Cold Crush GX, they would have to um, strip my hand away too. So I think here, we're probably just going to chill with this hand. We want Acrobikes back in the deck. We want all this stuff back in the deck if we do get our hand removed. Like, we want to find Acrobikes. The Electro Power is kind of important because my Raichu Raichu and my Picaron both need Electro Power in order to knock out Articuno GX to deal that 180 damage with either Full Blitz or Tandem Shock. So we're going to hang on to the Electro Power and not burn that either. Though I haven't played any, so I probably could maybe get one in to the discard pile. Still having three left in deck would be pretty good. But the premise behind Picaram built this way. You know, you can use Tag Calls to get it set up. You can use Acrobikes. You don't necessarily need the Dene GX anymore. Uh, even against Pidgeotto, the, D the Dene GX was a huge liability because a lot of times Pidgeotto players would try to bring up your Dedenne GX that you use to set up uh, in order to uh, stall the game out that way. 
And having a list that can set up without Denny GX just uh, you know creates less liabilities on your bench. And it's really good for being able to navigate the prizes or force your opponent into poor prize situations, especially since a lot of decks are no longer playing custom catchers. You can, you know, give up a Jirachi early. You can attack with Picaram. Maybe you could go in with Zapdos or Hoopa and then finish the game off with Raichu and Alolan Raichu, something like that. Or you could just, uh, you could use... You know, Picaram, maybe a Jirachi goes down early, and then you go in with Picaram, and then you accelerate to Raichu, Raichu, and then you could still use your Lightning Ride GX and throw up a second Jirachi before you've given up game yet. And you just make it so that your opponent has to take out both of these big tag team Pokemon, as well as, you know, maybe another Jirachi or two, or a Zapdos and a Jirachi or something like that. And it ends up being very, very good. So. They are stacking their hand. They are resource managing. I think at this point, I want to see more cards. I want to kind of burn through my deck a little bit. And I would like to reset stamp my opponent if I can because their hand is huge. And yeah, so let's see. I think I'm going to play, hmm, play the Acro Bike. If I wanted to, just dig for the reset stamp, limit them, or dig for the second custom catcher, bring up Pidgeotto, and really try to limit what they're capable of next turn. I don't mind that, so I think I am going to do that. Keep the switch. I mean, the switches are just very necessary. Those need to stay in the deck. And we can get Volkner. I don't necessarily need the Thunder Mountain Prism Star. I say that now, but when I get all my energy hammered away. I'm going to be pretty salty, so I think we get the Volkner, and I'm just going to bring up a Pidgeotto and really try to make it so that my opponent cannot do a lot this next turn. We'll bring up one of these guys, and then I think we're just using full blitz. I can tag call for Cynthia and Caitlyn if I want it, so I'm going to leave that, and we're just going to full blitz here. One prize remaining. They have to pull off the Articuno GX combo now, or just crushing hammer a lot of energy away. This is the remainder of my energy. I have eight there, nine, and then I believe two in the discard pile, 10, 11. So that's it. This is all of my energy. It's all on this. If they do come up with Articuno GX, I need to hit switch electro power to knock it out. Um, I gotta hope that they don't hit double crushing hammer on my benched Raichu, Alolan Raichu. If they do cold crush this turn, I mean, that would be pretty devastating for me. I do still have Zapdos in the deck who can theoretically just win the game with one lightning energy too, if all energy were to get removed from my board. And it looks like they are scooping it up. I don't think that they have the combo. Still a 21 card, 20 card deck, 19 cards left in deck. So they need to see quite a bit. It kind of got off to a slow start and the quick tag bolts was able to keep them, I think, from getting a very stable board position. They just couldn't hit their cold crush when they needed to. And that's gonna be it. So no Zero Aura GX needed. Um, you know, and it's true, not all Pidgeotto decks are created equal, not all Pidgeotto uh, players uh, are created equal, certainly players like Grant Manley are going to be, you know, uh, very, very, very difficult to beat at a regional tournament, I mean, he topped multiple regionals in a row with his uh, Pidgeotto deck, but I think in generalities, uh, with the high amount of switches that we have in the Picaram deck, that we are in a pretty decent spot with this matchup, and I don't feel terribly bad about it. I felt like Picaram versus Pidgeotto was 50-50 before Cosmic Eclipse, and I feel like it's still probably about 50-50 now. But, you know, I think uh, Picaram list will have to evolve. Let's see, what are we getting gusted up? Our Jirachi, see, I told you, sometimes your Jirachi gets stalled. <laughs> it's like there's no other option. They got to go for the stall on your Jirachi play. That's fine with me. If that's the best my opponent can do this turn, I am pretty confident we'll be able to find either Mallow and Lana or a Volkner or a Switch. But if not, it could be bad for us. Let's see. 
We got the Mallow Alana. The busted Mallow Alana. Well played, yes. And good game, Anamanaguchi. Sorry for the rough draws there. And uh, it was a pleasure playing against you. And full blitz for a game. So, yeah. There's one game in the books. Let's see what we get up next on the ladder. We'll rock one more and see if we can play against uh, something else. Maybe an ADP deck or... I've seen a lot of crazy decks. There's a new Vileplume deck I've seen rolling around that uses Vileplume GX to heal off damage turn after turn. And it plays like a bunch of other wacky Pokemon um, that, uh, that help. A lot of other wacky Stage 2 Grass Pokemon. And then I've also seen some Flygon GX decks, which are pretty rough for Picaram if they can get set up. Um, I was able to uh, fare pretty well against a Flygon GX deck with my Picaram deck that I played against earlier today because Custom Catchers really help you to slow your opponent down and bring up things like Vibravas and, uh, um, and a little dude, Vibrava Jr., whoever. Trap Inch, that's him. Right, which is uh, all well and good. Looks like we are playing against an ADP deck, so we'll see how we fare here. I don't like my opponent going first with ADP, not going to lie, because then they have an out to potentially get a quick... Oh, yeah, they got nothing. A quick, uh, you know, GX, and then things can really go downhill from there. So we do have our Marshadow, which is pretty sick, you know, in our hand. And we're playing against a Caldeo, apparently. Let's get ourselves... We already have Cynthia and Caitlyn in the hand. So thinking we just get the Pokemon. Seems pretty good. And then I could Volkner for a Pokemon communication. Go just get a Jirachi. I think I kind of like the stability of that. We're going to do that, get ourselves lightning energy. And my opponent's getting off to a really slow start, so I don't mind the slow start on my side either. Take a look, just make sure we do have Tapu Coco Prism Star. We've got two power plants too, so that's awesome. And we're going to trade in probably the Picaram just to get ourselves Jirachi. And we do have some lightning energies to start attaching to our own Picaram at this point. I'm not worried about my opponent getting the turn two attack, so the... Jirachi here is really good. It's going to get us a lot of mileage since it's going to stay in the active for at least a couple turns. Got another Tag Call and an Acro Bike. I think I like Acro Bike because I might hit a Lightning Energy, get it into the discard pile for the Tapu Koko Prism Star, which is cool. We got ourselves Electro Power and Reset Stamp. I'll take the power. And we're going to pass to my opponent. So next turn we do need some things if we were going to get a turn two full blitz i could volkner maybe for oh no the thunder mountain prism star is not in the deck so we do need to find ourselves the tapu coco prism star if we're going to get a turn two full blitz we could cynthia and caitlin away our own lightning energy i don't like doing that if we don't have another lightning energy in our hand because it means that you could miss the attachment for turn and in this particular version of picaram getting the attachment for turn is huge because it's not as turbo as it used to be. So we do really need to hit those attachments every single turn because at worst, you know, we want to get a turn three full blitz. Now we are still banking on the turn two full blitz, trying to get that as much as we can. But turn three is acceptable in a lot of games these days. I mean, games are slower, the grindier. Uh, they play more healing cards. My opponent looks like they're just going to attach an energy to the Caldeo. They don't have a lot going on. And we're fine with that. I think we kind of have to play Cynthia and Caitlyn this turn, which is fine. Not a lot of cards in this hand I want to discard necessarily. But we'll Stellar Wish first just to see. I think Power Plant is a good grab. We could also get the Volkner. But... Let's see, Volkner would get ourselves, since we didn't get the Switch, if we got, you know, Volkner could get ourselves the Switch, you know, the Pokemon communication, get the Tapu Koko Prism Star, but since I don't have a Switch in hand, I can't make that dream work right now. And since we are about to Cynthia and Caitlyn, probably for our... I'll just get an Acrobike. I don't actually have a Lightning Energy in the discard pile yet, so yeah, that was all wishful thinking. I was thinking that I had one in the discard pile, just because I was talking about it. 
So we are going to Cynthia and Kaylee. I'm going to Acro Bike first. Turn through the deck a little bit more. We love the Pokemon communication. That's good. And then if I Cynthia and Caitlyn away a Lightning into a Lightning and a Switch, we could get it. But that's still probably more risky than I need to be. I think if I just keep chugging along at this point, we will be in a very favorable position. So let's get ourselves the Jirachi and the discard pile. It's fine. Volkner coming back. And we'll see what we get. All right. That is fine. No lightning in the discard pile yet. But we're cool. We'll just go here. And we're going to be ready to party. Almost ready to party. Man, if I had just grabbed the, uh, you know, the old power plant, we would be cool. We're almost there. I don't want to reveal the Marshadow yet because I don't want my opponent to know kind of like that that is what I am uh, cooking up here. But I think I can safely bench the Raichu and Alolan Raichu. And just I will tag call. I could Pokecom for another Jirachi, which I do like. So let's thin that. At this point, I don't necessarily need the um, Tapu Koko Prism Star since we are just going to be getting a turn three. We do have the Stadium Nav in the deck, so I can Faulkner for that, which is cool. And we'll just get Jirachi. I've got Electro Powers in hand. Got Jirachi here. You know, our board is established. We're cool. And we can just play the slow game. My opponent's putting no pressure on me. So all I have to do is build up the play where I full blitz a Caldeo for knockout. And they may just scoop it up. Um, they're probably feeling pretty safe with the Chaotic Swell there. And I think the Marshadow, generally speaking, is just easier to use than the Faba, like I was talking about before. The Faba does have that niche use of being usable against Guardi Sylveon. I haven't seen quite as many Guardi Sylveon decks on the ladder uh, this past week. Two Caldeo GX, you say? Well, that could be a little bit problematic. Now, what's interesting is I could save the Marshadow, Full Blitz to myself, and then Tag Bolt two Caldeos. I do kind of like that play because it looks like that my opponent is not really doing a whole lot as far as like benching other things. So, you know, without other Pokemon hitting the bench, I do have to kind of be worried about them just playing the Caldeo game with the Swells. If I use my Marshadow to bump one Swell, they could just have another one and then wall me off with a second Caldeo. It does give me pretty much infinite time to figure out an answer to the Caldeo, though. If they're just walling with it, I could go get myself... Um, I could go get myself, you know, Zapdos. I can go get myself Hoopa. And we could swing away at that second Caldeo. And they do play healing, though. I mean, all right. Now that the Dedenne's down, I am not nearly as worried. That is very good for me. And they play Articuno GX and Megalopunny and Jigglypuff GX. That is huge. So now I'm feeling safer. Um, and with that Dedenne down, I think I'm cool to just use the Marshadow, bop that Chaotic Swell and look for the Stadium this turn. We are going to have to go in with Stadium Nav to try and get that. Not exactly my favorite play, but alas, it is the play that we're working with. So let's party, guys. You ready? Stadium Nav looking for a power plant. Yo, we got one. Let's go. Busted card. And we've got the Marshadow in hand, so we can resetting hole the Chaotic Swell. And use our Electro Power Full Blitz for 180 damage. And accelerates to our benched Raichu and Alolan Raichu GX, so that's great. Ideally, they would not have an answer to this Power Plants with Chaotic Swell of their own this turn. That would be fantastic. Now, they don't exactly have super fast ways to accelerate energy onto the Caldeo GX. So I think, you know, if they do want to accelerate onto Caldeo, they're going to have to put an Arceus Dalgo Palkia into play. Yes, there she is. So that's good for me. I can build up my Raichu and Alolan Raichu and just tank that thing with that. If I do get 
you know, to knock out a Jirachi, then it's just all eyes on Arceus to Algapalkia for game. And you can see, not having the Dedenne on board at this point in the game is just so strong for me because that is just such a liability. They're probably going to go in and use the GX, which, you know, will boost their damage by 30 and make it so that every prize they take is a bonus prize. But the hope is that they don't play any sort of custom catcher or anything like that. A lot of lists just play great catcher. So with just two tag team Pokemon in play and no other GX targets for them to great catcher, then they will still have to chew through two uh, tag team Pokemon. And that is the goal. So let's see here. We have got Mallow and Lana in our hands. Cynthia and Kaylin get us supporter back from the discard piles. Not really a ton that I want there. We gladly like an energy onto Raichu and a little Raichu. Volkner for something. I could start to build up like a huge uh, play with Electro Powers where we just take like a big knockout there. Or I think the Custom Catcher also very good. We could just Volkner for one Custom Catcher. Next turn, get the other one. Only one Lightning Energy left in my deck. I think I'm happy just accelerating that so I don't have to get it with the Volkner. And then two Lightning Energies in my hand. We'll just Full Blitz here. And the thing about ADP is that it just doesn't do a ton of damage. So they don't really have a way to knock out my Pico around this turn. We saw they do play Megalopunny and Jigglypuff. And that probably is a strategy for them against a lot of Picaram decks, is to just go in with that, take big knockouts. But at this point, they're only dealing 180, 210 damage after the GX attack. Malawalana, Alana, I was a little bit concerned about that, for sure. Because, yeah, they just glance off that whole hit. And now he's just rocking with 250 HP. He's fresh. I do have Malo and Lana that I can play myself too. It's better on Raichu and Olin Raichu because if that gets hit for 180, then I can heal off 130. And I, um, what, so 50 damage, I'll have 210 hit points left, which is still huge. And means that I do deny them that two hit knockout. On Picaram, the math doesn't quite work out as well. They deal 180, then I heal 130. And it's like they did 50 to 190. I guess that is still outside the range right unless i'm doing my math wrong you know i'm very bad at math so that could just be wrong 130 i'd have 190 left yes that is correct so they would be a little bit short of knocking me out with the mallow and lana so that still checks out that math is still good so i'm thinking that mallow and lana is going to be uh the gas here i could just mallow and lana into the right jewel and right and then gx this thing seems good right so <laughs> why not and then I have Volkner for double custom catcher for game. That seems excellent. So let's do this. I think. Yeah, we just Mallow and Lana. I'm going to switch, discard the Hoopa, and probably the Lightning Energy. All these other cards in my hand are good. And I can just switch into Raichu, Alolan Raichu, heal a bunch. I don't actually even need to use this Electro Power. I'm dealing 250 damage. They have 250 HP left. That's cool. We could put the Lightning Energy here. I guess if they like Cold Crush me, that is a little bit annoying. But we could just Lightning Ride GX into my Jirachi, I guess. That or Picaram is also fine to throw into. I think I'd rather throw into Picaram. Yeah. That way. I switch into this guy. He can take a hit and probably won't get KO'd, which is cool. And then I am all juiced up for a big tandem shock for game. Pikachu's got enough energy to retreat itself. I've got Cynthia and Caitlyn, Volkner, Malo and Lana. A whole bunch of options to bring that Raichu back into the active position. Double custom catcher in the hand as well to you know pick off a Jirachi or something like that. Now, it would be a little bit concerning, I guess, if I do get reset stamped to one. That is a mild concern. But I do have the Jirachi there, so any sort of switch cards, Malo Lana, Tag Call, all of that will get me into the Jirachi again, which is good. 
Meanwhile, my opponent does not have anything on their board that can actually knock out the Pika Rom. They need to deal... Oh, my math was wrong on that. My math was so wrong, right? If they deal 180, where was I? What was I doing? So they deal 180, 180 minus 130. Does Mallow and Lana only heal one? That's where my math is wrong. I'm sorry, guys. Mallow and Lana heals 120. So yes, the math does not check out on Pika Rom like it does on Raichu and Alolan Raichu. And since the Mallow and Lana heals one, I was thinking it heals 130, heals 120. So that's why the math is so bad with the Pika Rom using it against Arceus Diagopalkia because they can just get around it, right? Um, with the 180 damage that they deal. But it doesn't matter. We've got game, Custom Catcher, up Jirachi, and uh, bada boom, bada bing. That's it. GG's. Never punished. Andrew's bad at math. Still bad at math. Still doesn't read cards. But, you know, hey, who cares? So that's going to be it. Pikachu and Zekrom GX. Still a good deck. I think this is a fun way to build it. Give it a spin yourself and let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm going to be doing this for a bunch of the new decks from Cosmic Eclipse. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, sub the channel, ring that bell. Check out FullGripGames.com for all your TCG singles, accessories, things like that. Uh, also, make sure to check out FullGripCodes.com for PTCGO codes instantly delivered when you buy them. I'm also going to be giving out these busted stickers that I got. If you watch the Twitch channel, you might know that this is my busted emote. Just got these made. I'm going to be sending them out to everybody who subbed to Patreon in the month of November. So you can check that out. It's in the description below as well. Take it easy. You guys have a great day. Peace.